seen, you know, full-on companies, you know, have their their modules and trainings on this. Well, they'll have a dedicated capital raiser, uh, the dedicated capital raiser. Sometimes the brokers, you know, that kind of things. On a on a on a big deal, I think is I, I've seen it work to some, you know, some level of success. Where you, you know, you hire a big, you know, someone who has a brokerage license, you know, that kind of thing, and they go out, you know, JLL, CBRE, all these guys, market Miller stuff. They all have these um, capital markets guys. They raise equity. Um, and they go out and they go to institutions or whatever else. That's a little bit different. That's a that's a different scenario. I think those those have their place. Capital raisers for fun certainly have their place. Capital placers, placement agents, those certainly have their places. What, what I'm talking about here is something a little bit different, which is I've seen this trend. Again, these are smaller, maybe smaller um, multifamily or self storage. You know, where the investment size, uh, a deal size is you know under 10 million, and um, I, but I've seen this trend where they basically take a pitch deck and they find someone and they say, hey, I'll give you this pitch deck. You go take this pitch deck and go out and raise as much money as you can and kind of just, just come to me with a check at the end of the day, at the end of 30 days, and I'll give you, you know, 25% of the of the GP carry. And because I get approached these guys, you know, cold emails and LinkedIn, whatever messages all the time, and they're basically messaging me, hey, here's the deck, here's a fantastic deal, whatever, I'm raising money for it, blah, blah, blah. Um, I think there's a real danger there. For one, I think that there's some fairly significant security danger that that is often um, just completely ignored. Um, but I think that there's a real danger with not having a good relationship between those who are running the investment and those who are investing with them. Um, I think that the more attenuated that relationship is, the, the worse it ends up being for both sides. I think there are places for investor relations, for capital markets. I think that those things are all good. I think it's really scary when you just are sending out pitch decks to, and sometimes they have this for 15 different people. They have a pitch deck to 15 different capital raisers. And they basically say, hey, whoever can bring the most capital gets my 25% of my GP carry or whatever else it is. And they send this out, and they boom, and they go out, and those guys are just hitting up you know, Facebook groups and WhatsApp groups and posting it on Facebook and doing all these weird things. Um, I think that there's a danger in that um, when the principals are not involved, when the principals don't have face-to-face -face interactions or, or actual you know, some kind of interaction, vetting their investors and just random people putting in. Um, part, of the, part of the danger, even aside from the security stuff, part of the danger is that, you know, as you're raising money, sometimes things change during the, during the fundraising process. Um, you know, and sometimes, it, hopefully it's not, you know, material, but sometimes during the fundraising process, um, you know, you might have additional due diligence comes in or, you know, something happens where the performer has to get updated. And we've seen where that information um, channel flow gets stale when you just have these investors kind of running or, or you know, um, capital raisers going out and raising money and they're not really involved in the deal or the capital raisers don't know the deal. So they can't speak. The only thing they can speak to are three slides on the, on the pitch deck and they can't really speak to the deal. I think that I've been pitching on these guys a bunch. Um, and uh, again, this is, there are people who are very, do this very, to a very, very big level. I think, um, I think it's dangerous. We, we like to put the, all of our capital raising is done in-house. Now, you may have people who run your, you know, CRM modules and some other things, and those things are all fine. Um, but when it actually comes to raising capital and being in front of investors, maybe we record things and send things out, um, but that's that's also us recording things and sending things out, not, you know, a, a third party to a third party to a third party sending emails out to 5,000 people, and they're not really involved in the deals. They're only involved in the deal if you invest, and there's some, there's some weird dynamics there. So we don't do any of that. We, just do, all, we do all the capital raising in-house. I'm including debt. Um, so then, so then you, uh, so then you close, right? You close on the deal. Now you own this asset, and then what goes on after that? A lot of a lot of uh, firms are motivated to close deals, and maybe less motivated to see the deal through and, and run the deal, you know, correctly. Because you, you take your acquisition fee and whatever else, and and you know the the 10 year payout upon, you know, divestiture. And then finally you get your carried interest and all kind of stuff. You know, that's kind of seems far out. They say, hey, I want to do a bunch of deals and I can earn, you know, a few million dollars or, you know, maybe 500K this year and just doing closing deals. 